everyone, Fiona here. So this is week five of our current subscription. I was asked to do a class more focused on posture. Uh, people often ask me, you know, how can they improve their posture? So remember that with Pilates, you're working a lot of your muscles and you're working on trying to get those muscles uh, working in the best possible way and in coordination with each other. So it's not ideal to have to stand up rigidly straight all day long and stick out your chest or it's not ideal to have to sit rigidly straight all day long. I suppose we know that having good posture is about continuously moving and changing and not staying in one static position for too long. So your body doesn't like to be rigid all day long either. So we've defined that middle position where everything works optimally. So we know that our head is heavy. And if our head is being in a habit of working at a desk or computer or even standing, if the head is forwards of the body, well that's very heavy in relation to its load, it's forwards of the pelvis. So if our head is naturally here, all these muscles are working all the time to have to hold the weight of the head instead of it flopping down against the gravity. So if we have a better alignment that our head is more over the shoulders, over the pelvis, then we don't have to work so hard to hold our body upright. And I suppose what we see in physio a lot is when people over the years have become very stiff in their upper middle back here and very rounded in their shoulders, if their pectoral muscles here are very tight and pulling the shoulders forwards, and if they don't have the mobility in the middle back here or the strength of the shoulders to pull back, we see people get very stiff here and then start to move like a hinge in the neck. So our spines are designed to move at every level, not just at one line across here and one line down the back. So we really want to get the movement happening throughout the body, okay? And then the whole shoulder girdle placement, okay? So your collarbone comes along here, that connects into the top of the shoulder blade, so that's the acromion piece of the shoulder blade. And then there's muscles which connect that blade to the back. So it's all muscle control. So again, if we're learning good habits, of thinking about long collarbones in front, not lying us a bit too rounded, then we are keeping that shoulder in a more optimal position and we're switching on these muscles back here which are designed to work. So when you do want to use your arm and you do want to take a weight or you want to take something or you want to wash your windows, that you're actually working from the foundation of the shoulder blade down here and not all the tension coming up the neck. So that's enough talking for now. Let's start by concentrating on exercises that we can do, which will work, release, and strengthen this area. So we're really talking at the moment about the upper middle back and shoulders and the head and the neck. Obviously, it all stems from this region as well. So when we're doing our standing work, we're still not extremely uh, anteriorly tipped in the pelvis or extremely tipped back. We're in our middle, our neutral for our body. And there's plenty more exercise that you can do for this area. I'm specifically picking things that are strengthening you from shoulders and shoulder girdle and neck today. So you're going to need two things. If you want to add any extra weight, you can have your two tin cans. They're only 450 grams and a rigid strap. So that's the dressing gown strap. It's not elastic. We'll just use it for a few extra things. Um, and we'll start off in standing as usual. So you can have those just nearby. Okay, we'll just warm up a little first. And then we'll have those going on. Okay, so we'll start 40 minutes now. Usual hip distance apart, toes pointing forwards. Usual three points of balance, base of the big toe, base of the little toe, center of the heel, and our pelvic bucket then in the neutral position. Okay, so those things are the same for really the start of every exercise. We're just use, using our arm circles again to limber up first of all before we take any extra weight. So from a posture point of view, just imagine that you're being pulled up from the top of your head, up through the roof. So you're being lengthened right up through the top of your head. Try therefore not to have your head forwards or your chin poking. Try to think about the back of your neck getting longer. Imagining that, that at right at the top of your head, you are being pulled up through the roof. And we'll just go for three. And two, and one. Okay, widening your stance, toes out, go down into those sumo squats, and this time we're gonna hold it, one arm on top of the other, and we're opening right back, we're looking at our thumb, and return. So we exhale as we open back. Remember I said about the tight pectoral muscles in front, so we're just looking to get a stretch through the front here, 
Put your thumb on top. Look right back at it. If you can follow with the neck rotation. Legs are staying steady. You feel the opening up through the chest. I'm gonna go for three. And two. And one. Okay, standing up tall. Moving one foot in front of the other. Now that's my left foot in front. So my right foot, I'm, I've just got off my forefoot behind here. Tightening the tummy, lean into it. Now my upper back is straight and I lift the palms up towards the ceiling. Starting to pulse those palms now in those little pulses. Breathing in for five pulses and breathing out for five pulses. So think now about trying to engage those lower shoulder blade muscles. So not up around the neck, but between the blades, right down underneath the tip of the blade. Try to think about an X on your back, so your shoulder blade is pulling down towards your opposite hip. That's that feeling of long collarbones in front, not letting your shoulders run. Keep the fingertips pushing away to the heels, not letting them shrug up towards the ears. Three, two, and one. Circle the arms up and switch the leg. So again, get your legs comfortable, kneecap pointing forwards, weight onto the forefoot behind. If your toes don't stick back, you can always wait there on the toes, just at a fixed point. Lean into it. Tummy in here again. And now again, fingertips away from the ears. Hands lifting up. Squeezing between those blades. Nice and long in your neck. So no short. And uh, neck chin hoping, not like that. Nice and long in the neck. You're looking down at the floor, just in front of you. Three, two, one, and up. Not already but a little bit more loading, so take your two tin cans if you're comfortable to do that. And move it onto your feet now. With the tin cans in the hands, the end of the can facing the ceiling and the elbows bent at 90. So now you're going to go up on the tiptoes as we keep our elbows in and bring the backs of the hands out and think about being taller all the time. So lengthening, keep lengthening the spine, nice and tall. You're starting to switch on these rotator cuff muscles in your shoulders. So you might notice asymmetry, you might feel particularly tight that you can't get the arms out to the side. You might feel that that's pulling through the front of the shoulders. Just again, stretch discomfort's okay, nothing sharp, just listening to your own body, starting to try to strengthen behind. I'm gonna go for three, and two, and one. Now we're gonna make some of the shoulder work a little more challenging. So if you can balance in the stride stance, that's with one foot in front of the other, you can even come up to the four feet there if you like. So this time, Externally rotate and now breathe in, breathe out, reach those hands in front of you, and then if we can, we're coming on up, nice and tall, elbows down, and repeat. So externally rotate, inhale, exhale, reach them out in front, continue to come right up, elbows together, and down. Keep going. So we're taking our shoulders through range of motion with just a little bit of extra weight, making them work. We're focusing on trying to keep our collarbones long. Even as we stretch the arms up here, we don't want to pitch the shoulder blades up. So we're working our shoulder muscles, symmetry on both sides. Elbows back down, last one on this side. Well done, and switch to both positions. Do the other foot in front now. Okay, now this time, put the hands down, elbows straight, back up on the tiptoes. Again, no rounding shoulders to begin with. Let's get the shoulders back, over the pelvis, think of the head, back, over the pelvis, nice and tall. Don't stick up the chin to do that now. Don't want to be like that either, that's extended neck. So nice and long. Okay, so now we're going to shrug the shoulders up. And then roll back and down. Inhale, exhale. So all you're doing is 
you're doing shoulder shrugs and backwards rolls with the weight of the tin cans in your hands. So we are actually asking those upper shoulder muscles of the neck, those trapezius, the major scalp muscles, we're asking them to work. We want them to get a little bit tougher. We don't want them to overload, but we still need to make them a little bit more robust, more resilient. So we're feeling now, with the weight of the tin cans in the hands, that we can actually move the shoulder blades on the chest wall. And we need to do that sometimes just to be aware of where are the shoulder blades actually normally sitting on your chest wall. Maybe you're naturally a little tight, stressed, and you have a habit of the shoulder blades sitting halfway up towards the ears. So you need to be aware of how to move them. With weight in the hands, it makes them strengthen. And you're trying to release and stretch back on the shoulder blades. That's why I prefer backwards rolls to forwards. So nearly there, and two, and one. Now, still holding the tin cans, if you need to release your grip or anything or change your elbows, you can. Go back to that left foot in front, right foot behind, toe position is, is optional, either bent or curled back. Lift the hands up again this time, feel the extra effort now, as you pulse the hands again, maybe a little bit slower. Now you're working against that extra 450 grams on each side with your tin cans. You should be feeling this on the lower aspect of the shoulder blades, the upper arm here, the tricep, and between the blades. You should not be feeling this so much up the neck because we're trying to make the lower shoulder blade muscles work. So breathe as you work. Continuing to breathe as we work. Little pulses, probably three pulses now for the breath in and three for the breath out. Still holding that tummy corset in and up, but starting to really feel a bit more fatigue in the shoulders themselves. Three, two, and one. Now we sweep those arms up, return, and switch to the other foot behind. Same again. So get the body weight, kneecap over second toe in front, weight bearing behind, either on the bent toes or straighter toes. Keep the balance and keep those hands away from the ears. Elbows are straight, so we're feeling like we're opening through the fronts of the shoulders and strengthening through the back. Three, two, one, and circle. Good. Okay, let the tin cans down for a moment and take your dressing line strap. Now, if you find the balance hard, you can just toe touch on one, otherwise you're coming right up here to tabletop. So now we put this in the front of the pelvis, even if we're in tabletop, it can stay there. And we're going to be pulling back against this rigid strap. So if I use that bar behind me there, I'm going to focus on that straight line. Head, shoulder, hip, knee, heel. And I'm going to stay in tabletop, tummy muscles are in, the floor is up, and I'm pulling down back on the hands. Now I can add a little pulse, I'm not really going to get anywhere because the strap's rigid. I'm going to breathe now as I'm pulsing those hands back into the resistance. If you can't balance, toe tucked on or shin touch with that toe. Keep nice and strong and keep tall. Keep focusing on the head not being forwards of the body. The head is over the pelvis. Shoulder blades are back. We're not hitching as you add extra pressure to the arms. Three, two, one, and release. And roll those shoulders with no extra resistance for a second. Okay, gonna go the other way. Standing on that straight line again, so not too arched. Coming in, spine tall. Other leg to tabletop this time. Okay, put the pressure on the band for the strap. You could do this with elastic, certainly. I know just a lot of you won't have them at home. So the rigid strap is fine for the other exercises we're using for as well. Think of those long collarbones. Think of the shoulder blades staying on your back, not scrunched up towards the ears. Pulsing in two, three, breathe out, two, three, breathe in, two, three, and out, two, three, keep it going. Well done. And set down there. Last one, stand on the band, okay? We'll do a roll down in a minute, we'll snipe the back. Now we're catching our band in our palms, and what we're doing this time, we're pulling up on the elbows as 
working, but you're also having to stabilize your shoulder blades down in your back. So don't scrunch the blades up and shorten the neck. Okay, keeping your shoulders down your back, pull up through the palm side of the fist and bend the hips back. So biceps are working, but you're maintaining what you just learned with your shoulder blade positioning. You're not scrunching the shoulder blades up and shortening your neck. So don't do this. Okay, don't do this. So that's just shortening and squeezing the back of your neck. We want to keep that nice and long. And we go for three. And two. And work. Okay, and we need to bend again now. We need to move. So remember, we said it's a balance between getting stronger and then getting looser. So we're going to really ask for bend now on our roll down. Chin squishes the peach, continue to bend down. Try to think about each level of your spine getting its turn. So the tummy muscles are in, the pelvic floor can be gently squeezing up. And you can come down as far as you are able. Breathe in, hold it, and breathe out. Lower tummy, middle back, coming up first. Now lower back, middle back, and shoulders. Backwards rolls again for being more mobile, more supple. Again, I'll use this line behind me here of the weights rack. So you'll see I'm going to try and peel away from that. Head first, followed by shoulders. Bringing in the upper middle back, keeping my ribs tucking in here in front so I can really feel I'm bending in the middle of my back and not just hinging at the hips. And I can breathe in when I get there. And I'm holding in the tummy muscles to help me on the way back up again. To roll and peel back, finishing with the head and neck. And we're ready to come down onto our hands and knees, still focusing on the mobility aspect. The looser we can get this middle back, the better. So hands down and push through the hands, tuck the chin up into the bent cat, okay? Down into the arch. So the cat dog, I think this one's the cat, typically, isn't it? The cat winds up for the stretch, whereas the dog gets down, usually sticks the hands out in front and the paws out in front and tries to extend. Just remember when I do the cat cow or the cat dog, I don't stick the chin up. Although it's not wrong for everybody, I've noticed that it causes me dizziness and certainly in plenty of people that I've looked after for physio with neck pain it can do. So I stop where my neck is neutral but my upper back is dipping down here. Tummy in again. Okay, so if you feel that you don't have a lot of movement there and you feel very stiff there, you do need to work on continuing to practice that flexibility. If we can continue to practice and get a little bit more flexible through the upper back and through the control of how we move that middle back, upper back, then it's going to reduce the force on your neck over time. Okay. Now, we're going to change now to loading. So, leaving your hands where they are, and again, there's techniques where you can weight bear if you need through your knuckles, or have your rolled up towel if you like, under the heels of the hands, make the wrists easier. Now, this time, you're going to pull your shoulder blades down away from the ears, tuck in the ribs, keep a flat back, as in not too arch, not too bent, and bend the elbows backwards. Now, press up through the hands, and repeat. So we're strengthening our upper back and shoulders and even the head and neck by keeping the head in a neutral, fine position. So we don't want to have our head flopping down here or looking up like this. Head in neutral as we work. Push back up again and bend. Push back up again and bend. Exhale as we lower. Inhale as we push. You should start to feel that you're getting tired around those shoulder blade muscle connections. Okay, so in right here, 
not up to the neck. Remember, you're just holding the weight of your head. Again, lengthening of the spine, elongation of the spine. Sorry, my music has cut out. It means somebody's turned on Spotify somewhere else, I think, I'm afraid. Exhale as we bend. Inhale as we push. And push. Okay, from here now, we're going to turn that into thread the needle. So if we just come up now and release the wrists, take your tin cans back again. And this may also help your weight bearing grip on the non-moving hand. So if you pop the tin cans into both hands, you might find that actually weight bearing through the tin can is more comfortable than having the hand just down on the mat. If it's not, just put the hand back on the mat. Thread the needle now for mobility and adding in the load, the strength. Exhale, we come under with one of those hands. We come right across, how far will it go? Breathe in, hold it. Exhale, open from the elbow. Lift the elbow up first if you're comfortable. Lift the hand right back up. Just looking back as far as you're able. Inhale, hold again. And coming back down and under. Inhale, hold. Exhale up. Adding in that lift of the weight if we're able, breathing in to hold. Now feel how when you're coming underneath, you're having to control that, you're having to strengthen, you can probably feel the muscles behind the shoulder blade and rib area work. And then as you're coming up, you're trying to get that opening stretch in the front of this shoulder here. So you're opening right back up and you can follow with the neck rotation if comfortable. Two more on this side. We're still weight-bearing through the other hand, so we should still be getting an element of strengthening around that support shoulder. And last one on this. Very good. And we switch this over. So we're going under with this hand. Breathe in, hold. Breathe out, open up through the elbow, really stretch back up, feel how you tight through the front of that shoulder. Control the weight back down again, across as far as you can go. Breathe in, hold, breathe out, move. Now, we are looking for rotation through the whole spine, so don't worry if you feel that your back is moving, it is supposed to be, we're looking for that rotation. We have our knees fixed down, but the back is supposed to be moving. In this exercise, we want mobility here. We do two more again on this side. Last one on this side. Okay, and down again. So we set the tin cans down now and come down onto your tummy. Cobra first. So I like to have the hands just wider than the mat, starting with the forehead on the toe. So that means we're not extending the chin, we're not like this to begin with, we're looking down at our mat. So, so think about the blades first of all coming down your back and away from your ears. That engages those lower shoulder blade and upper back muscles. Now put pressure through the hands. Keeping the shoulders down, come up just as far as you are able to go. Today now, we don't really mind how far the lower back feels it. It is a bit of a stretch, but our primary aim here is the shoulder effort and the control. So it's not helpful to just pop up onto straight elbows and have the neck like this. Okay, it's much better to bring the shoulders down, push through the heels of the hands, spread through the fingers, Get that weight bearing pushed on through the hands so we strengthen our upper back and shoulders. Just come as far as you want, so you might find that that's all you can do. And return. Don't poke the chin, so even after you're extreme when you get up, you're still looking at your toe, you're not looking up at the sky. And three. And two. And one. 
Welcome. Set down. And come on to the forearms, okay? So this is called the sphinx position. Our hands are together, our elbows are under our shoulders, and our forearms are taking a bit of weight. So swan dive. It's a tricky enough one to, to get the hang of. Watch my head now. I'm going to let the head drop against the gravity. Then I'm going to suck in the tummy, lift the ribs, and I'm going to lift my head back up to where I know I have that long neck feeling. Chin tuck, long neck, not up here. Okay, and I'm gonna let it down again. Okay, so I relax, and then I say shoulders down, ribs up, head up, 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 back in line with that nice straight line, base of the head, down the upper back. So I'm pushing down through the forearms, I'm lifting up through the ribs as I lift my head into position. Then I relax, let it come down with the weight of the head again. Reset, shoulders down, ribs up, head coming back up, 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 up. Keeping that long neck, chin tuck, and release again. Some of you will find that easy, but some of you will find it hard. If the weight of your head feels too heavy for your body sometimes, this is a good way to strengthen it in a very safe way. So release. Push down through the forearms, up through the ribs, lift through the head, using those back and neck muscles. You'll feel it a bit in under the chin as well, where you're working your deep neck flexors. Pulling the head back in line with the body. Just three to go. If you're not finding it hard enough, just stay up and adding hold breaths. Last one. Well done. Take a quick bend, hands down, bend back into shell. Okay, let your chin down onto your chest now for a stretch and then slide the hands alternate, one forward, one back. Just open up around the shoulder blades and ribs around here. The lap muscles especially get a nice stretch on that. Going back to work the shoulders again. Get your dressing gown strap and place it on your mat under or around the fronts of the hips and thighs where your hands are going to be catching it. Okay, so you lie down with your head on your towel under the forehead. Depends on how long your arms are. You might need to shove it down a little bit to the front of the thighs. Catch it with the palm side facing up. Grip the strap. Now, tummy in, shoulders down, pull up, up towards the ceiling now against your resistance, which is going nowhere. So you hold that feeling. You're squeezing those lower shoulder blade muscles, backs of upper arms. Your tummy muscles are just pulling gently in so we don't feel any strain in the lower back. That's keeping the pelvis from overarching. So keep that feeling sucking in, tummy, pulling up against that strap. And release. Okay. So when we release, we can let the shoulders flop down to that short collarbone feeling. Then we reset, tummy. Shoulders down, long collarbones, then add in the, the band pull and hold it. Breathe now. Try to feel this on the lower aspect of the shoulder blades, upper arms and across your upper back. If you're feeling it coming up the neck, you're probably just shrugging up a little too much. Try and keep those knuckles away from you. And release. And we'll do that twice more till you really get tired. So tummy in, shoulder blades down, lift through the collarbones and hands. Don't let the rounded shoulders come back through the exercise. So it's a bit like reminding yourself about the pelvic floor. Are those collarbones creeping back down to the mat again? Keep them off it. And release. We'll do the last one now, hold as long as you can. Breathe out, set those shoulder blades, put tension on, as much tension as you want. Don't feel it up the neck. Well done. And back up, oops, onto hands and knees. Okay, similar now, we're going to 
going to take one tin can into the hand. I've got it in my right hand at the minute. And we're going to do our Superman. So the easy version is hip distance apart, knees weight bearing, and just to do the hand. That's certainly easier than adding in the opposite leg with it. So same hand and leg, repeating because we've got the tin can in the right hand. So I'm moving my right hand and my left leg into my Superman stretch. And I'm trying not to overarch or overround the back. Nice and level through my back. Left hand is working hard to stabilize. Don't let that shoulder blade pop up off your back. Push down through the hand. Five, four. Remember I said the head should be an extension of the spine. Don't have it down here. And two, and one. Just kneel for a second. Just release that left wrist so that it can then catch the tin can. Weight bear on the right. Okay, are we stable and steady? Tight tummy, central, neutral back. Okay, push. If you find this too hard, leave the leg down. Just do the tin can only. Don't have a head hanging. Neck nice and long, chin tuck. Head is getting strong, uh, sorry, neck muscles are getting stronger to hold the weight of your head in this position because the gravity wants to drop the head down. And three. Two and one. Well done. Okay, turn over into sitting. So we're coming over here into sitting. Now there's lots more exercises we could do, but I'm trying to prioritize you feeling the effort in the upper back. So I'm not spending as much time lying on our backs today. I want you to put your, your dressing gown strap around the feet and probably a cushion between the feet so you don't feel you're jamming the two feet together. Then hold on to the, the sides of the straps, thumbs on top, and let yourself back a little, as much as you feel comfortable with in your half roll back. Now tighten up the tummy muscles, drop the shoulders down, and pull the elbows back. Okay, release that. You don't even change where the hands are holding the strap now. You just release back to straight elbows and pull those elbows into bent. Pull the elbows down and back, bending yourself forwards. And release slowly. So again, no head forwards of the body, just nice and tall through the spine as you pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. And you'll feel that stretch at the backs of the legs. Anybody who can't manage that much stretch just goes into bent knees. Release back. Tummy muscles and elbows pulling down and back. Bending the elbows as you pull your body up. We'll do three more of these. And again, two. And one. Very good. Now we can let go of this. Okay, you can leave your towel off as well. And just take a bend now, sliding the hands towards the feet. Again, you can bend up the knees if you need to. Allow your back to bend. Breathe in, hold. Breathe out, stretch those fingertips up away from you. And circle the hands back. Again, bend. Inhale, hold it. Exhale, push. And again, two more. Really allow yourself to bend. Do squish your feet under your chest, under your chin, sorry, to your chest. Because it's a stretch, remember there's some times where we want to actually make everything bend and into range motion. And there's lots of others where we're trying to stabilize and stay strong in, in neutral positions. Well done. Now, if you can make your way over onto your knees, we're going to do a lunge stretch, knee finish. So if we have one foot in front of the other, you can hold on to something if you need to begin to get into that position. Just come forwards now, weight on the front thigh. So this is stretching, but we're using this to make our chest stretch stronger as well. Two hands in front now, thumbs facing up, and we're gonna open back, first of all, right hand. Right, right, right back. Feel that stretch here again without hitching the shoulder up. Inhale, hold it. 
and exhale, come back. Now the other hand, inhale, hold it, and exhale back. You probably feel this more on this hand, the right side of the left leg in front. Okay, we're going to switch the other leg so you can hold on to something if you need to. Just switch through there. Bring your body weight forwards first of all. Okay, you can stabilize on the back, get over that knee if you like. Then up nice and tall through the back. Two hands in front, thumbs on top. This time I'm opening my left hand back first. Feeling release around the front of the chest and a little bit of effort behind on the shoulder blade to really pull the hand back. Once more on each hand. Okay, and then push back up again. So you're back on two knees, then you're going to put your hands down. Toes curled under if you can do that. If you're just going through downward dog, so if you don't like to curl the toes under, we're coming up to this position. Now just pushing through the heels of the hands, press them away from you. Knees slightly bent and really pushing away on the heels of the hands. You'll feel again the muscles in around the shoulder blade, connection to the ribs here working and stretching. Head is allowed to just hang here you don't want to be tense, then let the gravity just let the head go, let it relax. Unless you're dizzy, we'll be coming up in three and two and one. And then just wave back onto the feet, bringing the hands gently back towards the feet, ready with the tummy in, pelvic floor working. Then roll your way back up again. Again, if you're not dizzy, no problem, move on. If you just need to take a second, it's okay after the head down position, some people can feel that. So we're nearly finished. I could have given you another few exercises in line there. Okay, two hands behind, and we're going to lift those hands up, and then we're gonna hinge forward. So I'm gonna show you just a few stretches that you can do, even if you're tight during the day. You want to pick, in, pick up a couple of extra little stretches that you can do if you've been sitting at a computer or sitting around too much, maybe not moving enough. I have sick children at the minute, so yesterday I was in the house all day long, not used to it. I think I did three and a half thousand steps only, and I am stiff from that. So I wouldn't like to be doing that every day. And we lift those hands again. Okay, and just coming up, uh, over the top now with one, and side bend over, just to release through the side here. Keep your heels planted down. Well, let's try to remember that our bodies are designed to move and um, before we became very sedentary in our working lives with driving to work, sitting at a desk, sitting at a computer, coming home, sitting on the couch, before we ever did that we were much more mobile. I'm just doing the side flexion side to side now of the neck while I'm talking. Um, and so really our bodies are designed to move a lot more than some of us do. And movement is the key to staying strong and healthy in lots of different aspects of your life. So if you're feeling very stiff and you feel like you'll never be able to get loose, just small steps. Don't expect too much of yourself too soon. If you haven't been moving and you're in your 50s, 60s, 70s, it's not going to reverse how those stiff joints aren't going to suddenly become supple, but they will become a lot less injury prone if you start getting them moving. So remember, we get injuries and sprains and things, even cricks in the neck and in the back when we just roll over in bed and we get too stiff. So the looser and the more supple we can make our baseline, the less injury prone we are. And then the stronger we can make our support network of muscles so that they all work well together and in harmony together, the less niggles you'll have, okay? So I hope that you find that helpful. Um, again, you can do any of those kind of stretches we finished with in the office. You could do the forward semicircle of the chin rolling side to side. But one I don't like to see people doing too much of, especially quickly, is the chin up and the rolling up. It compresses the back of the neck. So if anybody has those dizzy tendencies or that um, tension, headaches or anything at the back of the neck, it's often not very helpful. So well done, you can always 
ask me for more info. I hope you find it helpful and not too much jargon, physio terms. We'll go back to a more standard flow class for the, the subscription next week. Well done. Thanks, you. Bye.